This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr. Katja Simmon tells us about her research on autophagy in red blood cells. Hello, Katja. What is autophagy? Autophagy is um, a cellular process in which the cell degrades its content, its toxic waste. And among that toxic waste, there can be organelles like mitochondria, but also big protein aggregates. Um, it's um, very important to degrade toxic waste for the survival of the cell. And it's been shown over the last five years or so that a cell without autophagy can't survive, so it's important for survival. But it's also been shown that it's important in disease development, like Parkinson's disease, which is characterized by the accumulation of protein aggregates in neuronal cells. And furthermore, it's um, in the aging process, it's been shown that autophagy levels fall And the whole idea that we age, including wrinkles, hearing loss, cancer, and these things that occur with age, are actually due to these falling autophagy levels and accumulation of toxic wastes in the cell. Uh, My lab is interested in in white and red blood cell and the role in autophagy in 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 this cell type. Why is autophagy so important for our red blood cells? What happens when this mechanism doesn't work properly? Red blood cells um, develop from a mature cell, which is just a, um, ed- like every other cell, has got a nucleus and has got organelles and so forth, into an empty, empty sac, which just carries hemoglobin to, to the different parts of the body. And um, these red blood cells have to fit through small capillaries. And they can only do that if they get um, rid of all their cargo of all their nucleus and mitochondria and then will die shortly after that but when they when in that process they can carry the oxygen um, via um, to the to the small capillaries and when autophagy doesn't work in these cells we found in our models that um, the red blood cell doesn't mature properly and so can um, it's still able to expel the nucleus but the other organelles and in particular the mitochondria are no longer expelled so basically in our models we find that the lack of autophagy leads to anemia, which is a, a lack of these blood, red blood cells to develop and do their normal function. And so we're, we're actively researching into whether this is true in certain human anemias and whether that uh, human anemias can be due to the lack of autophagy. What's the most important lines of research that have happened in the last five or ten years? I would say that um, autophagy playing a role in many diseases, but one of the diseases where we don't know very much about yet, and it's actively researched into by our labs and others, is the role of autophagy in cancer. um, Cancer is, we don't really yet understand whether it's needed, autophagy is needed for survival of the cancer or not. Um, Our models show that the lack of autophagy, and particularly in white blood cells, leads to the accumulation of this toxic waste, as I was saying earlier, which then leads to DNA mutation, to the the transformation of these white blood cells into, for example, a leukemic cell. And later on, this leukemic cell um, will require autophagy to to survive. But uh, for the initiation of the transformation into a leukemic cell, the lack of autophagy may may be the cause. And we're, we're actively researching into this field too. We're trying to find out whether human leukemia have got something to do with the loss of autophagy. Why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? I think it would be very important to understand um, how drugs that are currently used in cancer, we know that they modulate autophagy, whether that's good or bad, whether they should be inhibiting or promoting autophagy. But also, um, this is a very novel field, and um, none of these connections have been made before that leukemia could be the cause of a lack of autophagy. And so it, it is extremely important to figure that out because that could really lead to, to, to a cure for, for these diseases or at least to, to a better use of the, of the current drugs and novel drugs that are being developed. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So on top of the um, basic research we're doing into, in this field, I'm also heading a translational immunology lab um, which helps other scientists in the department and other departments of Oxford University to to measure immunological parameters and autophagy parameters. And so this this entails having some high state-of-the-art technology and which is quite difficult to to operate oneself. So we're helping the scientists to to operate these machines and to, to set up their assays, to analyze their data, 
and um, it's been it's proven very successful as a lot of people are using it now and this is to do with Parkinson's disease, HIV and lots of other diseases that we are in particular not interested in but we are kind of hub for, for these scientists to come together. Thank you Katja.